Good morning, everybody. And if you see in your bulletin, it's supposed to be Andrew Jones. Well, I'm not Andrew Jones this morning. I'm Stella Beagle. So glad to have you here this morning. If you are a visitor, and I don't see any visitors, so I'm not going to give that spiel, but anyway, so glad to have you here on a snowy Sunday. Isn't it pretty? I knew he was going to throw something at me because, you know, he doesn't like that word. But anyway, Daryl, you can just leave the door open and we can just watch it snow. (laughs) But it is a beautiful morning. We're so glad to have everyone here. In your bulletin, you will see a prayer request form. Please fill that out uh, and uh, they will be collected at the... um, appropriate time and uh, they are passed on to us to pray all week and then put out on the network to pray and then as you know pastor and I took a couple of days off this week it was wonderful and we did go shopping sorry (laughs) you know he said he wasn't going to go but we did on Monday it was rainy and we went out and we did a little bit of shopping but then Tuesday we went down to the uh, Marseilles to see the war memorial down there. What a beautiful setting for all of the people, the veterans, and to see their names against the river. And uh, it was just beautiful. And the museum there that had letters and, and pictures of them. And it was just a, a very en- enjoyable ride that day. And I and, and thank God that uh, for his safety and getting there. In the East Room, you will see a tree that doesn't have any ornaments on it. There is a box next to it, and that is our angel tree. We need to have it decorated today, so if you are in the East Room and are enjoying your refreshment, please take an ornament out of the, uh, and several ornaments out of the box and put them on the tree. For new members, that is our also our member tree, so that if you uh, purchase a an angel, put your name on it, and that goes up every year after the crush to uh, signify the angels of our church. Also, at my house on next Saturday is our Christmas party. If you have not signed up, please do so, so I have enough chairs for you to sit on and enough food. You are to bring a, an appetizer and then also a gift a uh, white elephant gift that you don't want anymore, and some of them have been very creative, and um, we have we have a good time of laughter, and it's a good way to enjoy this Christmas spirit. Let me take a look at our other announcements here this morning. Uh, Monday is open prayer, and I've already mentioned our party on Saturday. Uh, the 15th is our family prayer time here at the church at 6.30. Uh, please mark your calendars for the candlelight service at 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. We will have service on Christmas Day at 10.30. And then also on New Year's Eve, we are having a, um, a party also. Bring an appetizer is at 6.30. And then we uh, will come into the sanctuary and pray for 2017 and other requests that we may have for that year. So put these on your calendar. These are some very exciting things that we're going to be doing in the next month. And so, um, Shannon, if you want to come and read the Advent, and I get the whole Paisley. This reading comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just, I just love holding her. She smiles all the time. Let's begin our service by singing our praise hymn, Thou Art Worthy, page 116. Heavenly Father, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God with us, Emmanuel, the one who from a manger came to go to the cross to, re to bring us into the kingdom. So Father, we pray today in that mighty and holy name that you would bring forth your blessing upon this service and upon those who are here today. And God, we pray for those who could not be with us today, be they sick, be they traveling, God, be they uh, performing other duties, that today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that God, you would pour your blessing upon our family. God, the family of Christ, the family of PCC, and the family of America, that God, today, you would bless America, and in return, we would bless you, O oh God. <clears throat> For blessed is the nation whose Lord is God. So today we ask your blessing here in Christ's name and ask that you would keep us safe through all that comes our way. We pray this in Jesus' name and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's turn to page 151 and sing together, Go, Tell It on the Mountain.
I hope you've had enough time to fill out your prayer request form. And hopefully, filling out the prayer request form, you've listed there your needs or the needs of some other. Or maybe you just want a praise report. Praise reports are good, by the way. It's always good to get a praise report. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, I'm going to ask Drew to come do this, and we're going to sing our prayer hymn. I believe it's, it is well with my soul, right? Okay, let's give that a try. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you and declare before the world it is well with our souls. God, I thank you so much that regardless of what the day may bring, we have a great and awesome intercessor who makes intercession for us without ceasing. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love for us. And God, upon these requests, we ask your blessing now. We ask you not just to bless the, the sick and the hurting, the, the financial needs, the, the mental needs, God, the family relationships. We ask, God, that you would pour your blessing out upon us all in such a powerful way that, God, as we leave this place today, we would declare it was good to be in the house of God. Oh, Lord, not just in a building, but together with the family. The family of God, the called, the chosen, those who are named among the saints. God, we don't act and look like saints. I don't know what a saint looks like other than when I look at my people here. God, we are the called of God. So now we ask that your blessing would be upon each one, upon the families represented, upon these requests, and we ask that you meet them now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, we're celebrating communion. What a great thing to celebrate. As we anticipate the birth of Christ in what we call Advent, I always look beyond the manger to the cross. And that's what communion's about. Communion's about what Jesus paid for us. Let us recite the Salem Covenant, which is in the back of your hymnal. We covenant with the Lord 
and one with another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. Let's pray together. Father, we do not presume to come to this thy table upon our own goodness or righteousness, not upon our, the, the fact that we are worthy of this. We are not. But God, because you have called us and because we have confessed Jesus as our Lord, because we have accepted the gift, we now, God, can declare ourselves righteous in the name of Christ our Savior. God, we thank you that you are able, able, Lord, to make us clean through the word that Christ has spoken. And these words he spoke to us. This bread is my body. This cup is my blood. And they are a symbol of covenant unto you until I return again to be with you. So today, we come humbly and we come by request to this thy table. We pray, God, that we stand in relationship with you. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. As a simple word for all of y'all, we serve an open communion here. It's open, and that simply means that If you're in relationship with Jesus Christ, you receive communion. And if not, during the time of confession, you can have that relationship with Jesus Christ. So today, for just a moment, let's take that moment to confess and to realize that Jesus is our Lord. Father, the word is, forgive me, for I have sinned. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. But God, because of the gift of Calvary, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So today, may our hearts and minds be focused on the gift. We can look at the gift of the manger or we can look at the gift of the cross. But either way, your gift to us is the gift of salvation. So today, I ask you to forgive us all of our sin, to cleanse us all of unrighteousness, and to wash us thoroughly with the precious blood of Jesus. As we receive the bread, which we ask to be blessed, and we receive the cup, which we ask your blessing upon. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said with me, amen. Would the diaconate begin from the back, please, and bring the elements through? We're going to sing our hymn, which is Come Bless the Lord, Come Share the Lord, page 782.
remember me, Jesus said, you can partake. The diaconate will now bring forth the cup. Jesus shared the cup with his disciples and he blessed it. I take a a, a special meaning in this because he blessed the cup and he passed it to them and he says, drink this as oft as you will, but when you do that, remember me. This is the blood of the new covenant. Life is in the blood. Just a few short hours after this, Jesus laid his life down for us. As you drink this today, remember his sacrifice. You may partake. Seven, testing, okay. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will upon will be upon his shoulders, as his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatest of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
I think that's an exciting thing. Every day. Would the ushers come forward, please, and we'll receive our morning offering? Shall we stand? Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, may the blessing of your Holy Spirit be upon these gifts, tithes, and offerings. We ask God that you would multiply back unto each giver according to their faith. God, that you would multiply some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But God, above all things, that we would bless you in being wise stewards of all you've given us. We ask this in Christ's name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God became flesh to be with us. Isn't that an amazing thing? It's, it's truly an amazing thing to realize that our God chose to be one of us. And we sometimes think in our minds, how can he understand what I'm going through? Because he, like us, lived in the flesh. An amazing thought, one that I'll develop someday. <laughs> but today, beings that today's candle was peace, my prayer for you today is peace. Second Sunday of Advent, a Sunday of peace, a Sunday of John the Baptist, John who called Israel to prepare for the Messiah, to prepare for peace, preaching unto them the baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sin. Baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sin. Remember what John said when he was standing there 
Repent, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sin. John wasn't a polished preacher, sort of like me, kind of rough around the edges. You'd figure after all these years I'd be real smooth, right? About as smooth as a freight train, but that's who I am. I thought about the idea of peace, and I studied Paul's word in Philippians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. If you have the outline, they're out there if you want one. If you have the outline, here's the scripture. And this is my prayer for you. Notice the title of my sermon is my prayer. This is my prayer for you, that you love, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is the best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ's coming. Did you notice how these three things fold together? Peace, righteousness, and love. Love that abounds in knowledge and insight. Love that abounds. Not just love that's meager. Not just love that's I love you. But love that abounds. There are no bounds to God's love. No boundaries. I'd like you to follow me in my thinking for a bit. For in this thinking, I believe that God's really going to begin to speak to each of us. First of all, I think that it's undeniable that all caring people want peace. Would you all say amen to that? Caring people want peace peace. Do we not? I want peace in the church. I want peace in my family. I want peace on earth, goodwill to men. That's what we sing this time of year. But if you look across the world today, is there peace? No, not really. Wanting peace, most people want more peace than just the absence of war, they want true peace, peace that has in it justice, peace that has in it love, peace that has in it joy, peace that has in it hope. In short, peace like that the people of Israel hoped for when they hoped for the promised Messiah. The people of Israel were waiting for the Messiah. They were saying, oh, when he comes, it'll all be okay. When he gets here, everything will be fine. When he gets here, will reign. Well, what they didn't realize is that no man reigns. It's God that reigns. So how is it then that John the baptizer, who prepared the way for Jesus by his preaching, did not talk about forming groups or parties that struggle for peace, nor writing letters to leaders, boycotting companies that harm the earth, rioting in the streets, or even about relationship between nations and groups as a way of getting ready for peace. He didn't do anything that we do today for peace. He preached one thing and one thing only, repentance. Now, preacher, we're in Advent. You're supposed to be getting us all psyched up and excited about Jesus' birth. Well, that's what John the Baptist was doing, but he was doing it about Jesus becoming who Jesus really is. If you, I, I ought to take us on a field trip right now and all walk out and look at the crash and come back in because most people at this time of year have the Ricky Bobby mentality. (laughs) Oh, little baby Jesus. Oh, dear baby Jesus. Every time I see that movie, I want to throw something at the TV. Not that I I, I disagree with little baby Jesus at Christmas time, 
But so many people have Jesus stuck in the manger forever and ever as a little baby. And if it were not for the fact that he grew up to become a man, to go to the cross, to die, we would have no salvation. We would be working our way to heaven. It sort of like reminds me of a song. I'm working my way back home. Uh, you don't know that song, but that's okay. In Luke chapter 3, the beginning of any chapter of the Gospels, and think about this question. What is it that God is trying to tell us about being prepared for his coming? When he speaks through John the Baptist and says, listen to these words. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight the path for him. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. The man who has two coats or tunics should share with him who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. We have in our church a missions committee. And the missions committee is charged with doing some of these sensible things that Luke writes to us in chapter 3. Help someone in need. Help feed families. Eileen and, and Joyce work at the pantry. They go there three, four times a week. Work at a little bones to the to their fingers to the bone. They, they come home so tired and worn out. Hundreds and hundreds of people receive through the Interfaith Food Pantry. Hundreds of people receive through St. John's Food Pantry. Through Green, uh, Green, Green Harvest Food Pantry. Hundreds of people. Why? Because there's a need. And what is the church's responsibility to help in that need? But before that, John says that we are to make straight the path for Christ, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. What's the relationship between preparing the way of Christ for the Prince of Peace and one's life? Indeed, in the life of the world... And doing good works. Is it okay to do good works? Yes. Do you get to heaven by doing good works? Anybody? No. What do you get from good works? A sense here that you did what needed to be done. What is the relationship between love that abounds in Christ in the knowledge and depth and insight of the world which is Christ that reigns completely that there is not only peace but peace that's everlasting. Peace is perhaps the greatest social and political need that our world has and yet John and indeed Jesus himself never talked about peace in social or political ideas. Did you know that? They never talked about peace as a political idea or as a social idea. Not because these words and ideas behind them were unheard of in those days, far from it, but rather it is, I think, because in the end the words are true that say peace begins with me. Reminds me of an old song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Don't you like the tune that I carried that in? Ooh. But you got the idea. There, there's a song that we sang back in the 60s and 70s. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And the church has totally forgot that concept. We've turned... To the president, to the Congress, to the Senate, to the governor, to the mayor. And you know what? They failed. And you know what? Who failed even more than them? 
us. Because the Bible's clear. Let the peace begin with me. Is there dissension in your family? Is there dissension in your church? Is there dissension in your party? Is there dissension someplace along the line? The only place that it can begin to be healed is in you. Preacher, this is, this is Advent. You're supposed to be making us feel, honey, I ain't done yet. Bear with me. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with, y'all can say it out loud, me. It's good that we recognize that peace begins here, not there. I've said for 47 plus years now, you cannot legislate morality. If you could, there'd be no need for police officers. There'd be no need for someone standing at the back of our door as security. There would be no need for locks on doors if you could legislate morality. It can't be done. You see... I believe that we can only prepare for the Prince of Peace, that we can only make his path straight and the rough places smooth by announcing through our own lives, through our personal commitment to what peace is, through our commitment to who God is and what the kingdom of God is about, the essence of peace. It's our lives, it's our lives that people see. You me, we're perceived as PCC, Plymouth Congregational Church. When people see us, what do they see? Do they see the peace that passes all understanding? Or do they see a group of angry people that are mad because their candidate won or their candidate lost or this person didn't do what they thought they should do or that person did what they shouldn't have done? Or uh, as I posted on Facebook this week, a mathematician, nine times seven equals 15. And then he went on to make six more equations that were correct. But his whole class laughed because he made one mistake. Have you ever made one mistake that you have been identified with from that day forward? Boy, I have. I don't know about you. Doesn't matter what good was on beyond that with every equation is correct. It's the one that you made wrong. But you see... That's not what peace is all about. Peace isn't, isn't for forgetting the wrong. Peace is understanding the right. Oh, shut up, Bill. We make ourselves ready and the world ready for the reign of the Prince of Peace by striving to be peacemakers. Your son loves you. Your daddy loves you. Hold hands, shake hands, hug one another. I'm trying to be a peacemaker here. Did it work? No. Peacemakers. Your mommy loves you. Whether you know it or not. Your daddy loves you, Kelly. Paisley, your mommy loves you. Hi, Paisley. First time I ever saw the kid cry. I hollered at her. Boy, what a dummy. Pamela Bondi, writing in the religious section of the London Free Press. Listen to this date, December 7th, 1977. No, on 1991. 
wrote about why people do not come to church as they used to, seems to ignore this idea that we need to live by the laws of peace. When she states that the reason people do not attend church like they used to is because most of the people within our society are unresponsive to God's call. Would you say amen to her? Be careful. Your husband's sneaky. All right. Ms. Bondi asserts that this is not the church's fault, but the fault of individuals who fail to come to church, who fail to respond to God. She further claims that people fail to respond to God because they are in love with material possessions rather than with God. And people all over the world say, hey man, she's got it right. Well, she does have a lot of things right. Quite a bit of truth in her ideas. But, and I have that capitalized, but, okay, overall, I believe that Mrs. Bundy and others like her, for all good intentions, is wrong in her views. She's wrong because the scriptures themselves assert repeatedly that God's word must be heard before faith can come. And how can that word be heard if there is not First of all, a messenger of the word. Now it says in Romans the 10th chapter, the 14th verse, How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they not hear without a preacher? And every one of you in this room say, Amen. We need Bob and John and Andrew and Bill and all the other people that are in influential in this church and serve on committees, you need to go do that. Well, let me give you a surprise. Just as John the baptizer was a messenger for the living word, preparing everyone for Christ's coming by his preaching, listen to this carefully. So we, we as God's people, are called to be messengers of Jesus, preparing his way in our own lives. Preparing his way in our own lives. And through our lives, preparing his way in the world. God's call to us, And to others, does not normally occur by magical means. Indeed, most often, God's call comes to us, and indeed, God himself comes to us through the most ordinary means and through the most ordinary people. How many of you would say that Brian Finley is a preacher? I would, but he wouldn't. His mama's sitting there shaking her head no. No. His sister sitting there saying, boy, you don't know him very well. But every one of us, every one of us preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ every day. And to some, you are the only Bible they have to read. It's important that we prepare the way of the Lord. I don't mean to embarrass Brian, but I'll tell you this. I could have chosen any other name here. Any other name here. I could have put my name in there. Because, honey, I'll tell you what, growing up, I was the farthest thing from a preacher you'll ever find in your life. I spent most of my time doing music and drugs. Not until one night, weighing 330 pounds, when I broke our couch, and this lady here challenged me to give my life to God. I was on a fast track to hell. but because one preacher spoke to me, her, 
I've heard, before that I heard hundreds of sermons. Her Sunday school teacher prayed for me. Her pastor challenged me. Are you a Christian? My answer to him was yes, I'm white and born in America. I didn't know. That's what I thought a Christian was. I went to church once in a while. I thought that's all that you had to do. Real people, not just dreams, communicate God's call to us. Real people and not just visions show us God's way of peace. Real people, not just heavenly revelations, lead us towards God's kingdom and prepare us for God's work. Anybody ever heard of... Frederick Nietzsche, a man famous for his doubt and unbelief, once he said to a group of Christians, I will believe in your Redeemer when you act like you've been redeemed. Wow. This is the challenge that John the baptizer laid before his people of Israel. Then he came out of the wilderness and went into the country around the Jordan preaching baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and saying to them, I indeed baptize you with water, but there comes one greater than I whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unloose will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's okay, Holy Spirit, I'll take you, but I don't want that fire. That, that far, uh, uh, no, that means trials, that means tribulations, that means struggling. Hmm. This is a challenge that Paul believes that the people of church in Philippi will be up to when he prays for them like this. That your love will abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they may be able to discern what is the best and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ's coming. This was after the first coming of Christ. This is the second coming. This is what we, the church, need to really be celebrating as an advent, the second, the now coming of Christ. Hmm. Paul believes that the Philippians are up to the challenge. Here's where the good news comes, PCC. I believe you're up to the challenge. I believe it doesn't matter what the numbers reflect. I believe that we're up to the challenge to present the gospel, the way of salvation to the world. I believe that with all my heart. Listen to what it says. God's grace is upon you all. All you have to do is lift up your eyes, open your hearts, so its power may operate in you. We can prepare ourselves and we can prepare our world for true peace, everlasting peace, by living our personal lives under the guidance of Christ's love and wisdom and insight. That's what Christ wants us to do. All it takes is humility and a desire to walk in the path of Christ. All it takes is a heartfelt desire to turn from holding everyone else responsible for creating peace and sharing love, taking those responsibilities upon ourselves, knowing that we do so, that as we do, so we do so for God. And God will work with us to bring good. How many of you have ever seen the movie, the Walt Disney movie, The Sorcerer's Apprentice? Anybody ever seen that? No? Oh. Two of you, three of you, four of you. Mickey Mouse. I very seldom ever use these kind of illustrations, but this one was really good. Mickey Mouse was an apprentice to a sorcerer. And the sorcerer gave him the powers, and the sorcerer told Mickey Mouse, mop the floor, I'm going to be gone for a while. Sorcerer walks out the door, much like when mom and dad leave. 
Oh, wow. Did you see that look? Anyway, much like when mom and dad leave, and, and so Mickey Mouse looked at the bucket and looked at the mop and looked at the dirty floor and said, Pfft, okay, Pfft. and the mop began to mop and the bucket began to fill up and 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 fill up. And, fill up. and pretty soon the house was flooded and guess what? The sorcerer came back and looked at him and said, what are you doing? Well, I thought I'd use a little bit of magic to clean the floor. He had the principle. He had the idea. He had the power. But he didn't know how control it. Much as though when we first come to Christ, we want to run helter-skelter all over the world bringing everyone to Jesus. I did it in Huntington, West Virginia. I went to work. I did my work real quick, ran outside with my Bible and witnessed every prostitute and John in town. Ended up getting fired over it. And then when they accepted Christ, I didn't know what to do with them. I was so green with Jesus, I didn't know what to do. But praise God, he did. You see, the apprentice picks up the mop and returns to doing his job the hard way. Any of you live in life the hard way sometimes because you're too stubborn to do it God's way to begin with? Guilty. Me. Okay? Hopefully, knowing the end, knowing in the end the limitation of his own knowledge. So it is with us. If we look for peace, if we try to build peace and prepare the way of the Lord by setting uh, in action large social movements, leading support uh, to great causes without first seeking the wisdom of God, the insight into our own lives that we need, these forces will overwhelm us. Look at what happens in our world today. I get so frustrated. I'm an animal lover. Please, don't take this wrong. I am an animal lover. You may not like my cat, but I'm an animal lover. I get so frustrated when I see articles and read articles about taking care of the animals, and we've got thousands and thousands of homeless veterans on the street. If a dog's life matters... Doesn't a human's life matter also? Church, listen to me. Our missions department sent money to the tornado ravaged dogs in Iowa. Didn't we? At some point? What about the veterans? I... You can give me the argument all you want to. Well, some of them, all you know, they want to be there. Bull pucky. Who wants to live on the street? I've told you before, I met a man that lived under the 31st Street Viaduct who at one time was an Exxon executive. He didn't want to live there. He had to. There's no place else for him. The source of the apprentice, too many people try to make things happen on their own. We can straighten the paths of the Lord. We can prepare his way in the world, making rough places smooth when we commit ourselves to living by his love and his love alone. Until Jesus Christ is the obsession of your heart and life, you will always be looking to men to meet your needs that only he can fulfill. Only when you make Jesus Christ your first love will you, really for a, will you be ready for a love story that reflects his glory. And so it is my prayer with Paul for you that your love may abound 
more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is the best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ's coming. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I hope and pray that you will take the notes of this message with you. That if you miss something that I said, you'll go back to YouTube and and watch it. But above all, let the mind of Christ dwell in you richly. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. And I want to thank you for the peace of this Advent season. But God, it's not peace that a man can make. It's peace that only we can demonstrate to the world. God, I pray that you will be with us in all things. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Would you do Emmanuel? Our Father, dismiss my people in peace. May the peace that passes all understanding abide with us. God, we pray your face to shine upon us throughout this week. Make us mindful that we are the living gospel of Jesus Christ. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen.